Today we are going to be talking about round numbers. Round numbers could be red flags for fraud, intentional or unintentional errors, estimates and biases in the data. Each situation is unique. We need to know why we are looking for the round numbers and when we find excessive round numbers, what it might or might not mean. We're going to be looking at the Harriet Walters fraud case. We are going to be looking at some numbers from the 2020 presidential election. And I will give you some demonstration about using Excel and using Minitab to analyze our results. Fraud Magazine. Dusting your data for the fingerprints of fraud. It's the cover article. And in this cover article, I talk about the six patterns that fraudsters like to use. The one that I start off with is round numbers. Fraudsters like round numbers. I start off by talking about the Michelle Hickson case. And in her case, her cash and petty cash fraud scheme, she liked round numbers. And here we can see three round numbers. And round numbers are extremely odd as petty cash reimbursement numbers. Which fraud schemes do I care about? Occupational fraud, bribery schemes, and financial statement fraud, also known to like to use round numbers. We'll start off by talking about Harriet Walters. In my book, I have a whole chapter on Harriet Walters and her fraud scheme. This is just a summary. Harriet worked at that building in Washington, DC. She was in charge of property tax refunds for the District of Columbia. She made some refunds, but they were fraudulent refunds, and those were the ones that she pocketed. There were th two main kinds of property tax refund. Number one, straight overpayments. The owner paid too much for some or other reason. Number two, court-ordered assessment refunds. This is where the building is assessed up here. The owner says, no, my building is only worth this much, and after a whole court session, the court might agree, and then the owner would get refunded. The difference times the tax rate plus 6% interest for the period overpaid. These are Harriet's numbers. She started off in 1989, the title of a Taylor Swift CD. Here we go, $4,060. This is maybe a nicely furnished house. Each fraudulent refund, these are just the fraudulent refund amounts, a nicely furnished room in my house. Then we go. Car, 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 car. She ups the ante. Every time we steal, it's a car. At the bottom of the page, a whole house. Now we go with the fraud amounts cycling between house or car. They are large and some of them are round. Here we see a number 250,000. What are the chances that the property owner conveniently overpaid by exactly a quarter of a million dollars? Or if we take that um, calculation, difference times the tax rate plus 6% interest, what is the chance that that equals a round number, a multiple of a thousand? Highly unlikely. Watch these round numbers, 335,000, 368,000, 350,000. 340,000. These round numbers should have been red flags for the fact that they were fraud. This was the transaction that ended the whole scheme, and it ended because of a vigilant bank manager, not because of anybody within the organization. Lincoln Square, a fraudulent refund for 375,800. If I got 375,800 from anybody, I would spell Lincoln correctly. She duplicated some numbers, 468,000. One year later, again, 468,000. The round number shouldn't have been there in the first place, let alone a duplicate of the round numbers. The round numbers are highly unlikely. If the owner won a reduction in the assessed value, it would be that reduction times the tax rate plus interest, there weren't that many buildings that were assessed for 100 uh, million or more. You can pause and read that situation. 
Round numbers should have been few and far between. In May 2018, I published an article in the Journal of Accountancy, Round Numbers, a Fingerprint of Fraud, and this article deals with round numbers and round numbers only. I then have a case for my students. Then I ask them to identify the round number refunds in the fraud data, Harriet's data. The final round number to be a number that is a multiple of 1,000. And over here, I ask to calculate the uh, fraud number percentage. Let's go to Excel and do the analysis by ourselves. I will give you a link to this data. We're going to do the round numbers. First, we're going to, let's widen this a little bit. We'll do column width, and here we go. I need an indicator here as to whether the number is round or not. And the function that I'm going to use is mod, mod being remainder. I will go equal mod of d2, comma, 1000. What is the remainder after dividing d2 by 1000? It'll go in four times, remainder 60. I'm going to copy, watch the plus sign, a swift left, a double click, and I have remainders. Whenever I have a remainder, it's not a multiple of 1,000. I'm cycling down to find my first zero. Here we go. 126,000 divides by 1,000 126 times with a remainder of zero. That number is round. I need to make this a little more complicated. And what we are going to do is we're going to put an if statement here. Equals if. If this number equals zero, then put a one in this column, which indicates that it's round. Otherwise, put a zero, meaning that it is not round. And I have changed my function. I included the if statement. And here we go. Now it's left at this currency. We can just format the cells and we'll format them as number, number, no decimal places, and all my round numbers will have ones next to them. Here we go, the 250,000 has a one. Uh, we have a couple in order here, there we go. The 362,000 has a one, and the 350,000 has a one. The next uh, requirement was to show me all the round numbers. And the way we're going to do that is we are actually going to sort the data and I will do a right click here and I will do home, sort and filter. And what I want is a custom sort. And first I'm going to sort by round descending, largest to smallest, so that I have all the ones at the top. I'm going to add a level and then sort by amount descending so that I have the largest at the top as well. I have the largest round amount and I have all the round amounts up here. I can see here that I have 24 round numbers. They are all here. And the way that I would do it if I was doing audit working papers, I need to copy this and paste it in the Word document that is my audit working paper or my case document if I'm submitting a case as a classroom exercise. Here we go at the bottom, snipping tool. And if you want to find your snipping tool, you might have to search snipping, I have to spell it correctly, snipping tool. It'll be a new snip and we'll go get the plus sign, drag. And these are indeed my round numbers. I have them here. If I want to copy them and paste them in a Word document, it will be edit copy, go to the Word document, and it'll be edit paste. The second requirement was for the round number proportion. And we will use, firstly, simply to count, we will go equals count if the numbers in this range, there were 239 numbers, so we go to row 240, 
count if the, these numbers are equal to 1. I put the range in and I put a 1. And now it's going to count. It found that they were 24 round numbers. It counted 24 ones. But I need the proportion. So I need to divide it by the total count. So we'll go divide it by the count of the same range. My numbers are in E2 to E240. One row is used for the headings. And here we go. Proportion 0.1004. Format the cells, number, four decimal places, back to the PowerPoint. It was read the article, identify the round numbers, show a screenshot of the 24 round numbers showing these fields, and 24 rows of data. Um, sort the results by amount descending, largest to smallest, we did all that. Calculate the round number percentage. It needs to be formatted as a percentage, and we are doing Harriet Walters here. Format cells, percentage, two, okay. And now I have correctly answered here, 10.04%. By round descending, so that all the ones were at the top, and then by amount descending, so that the largest amounts were at the top here. I used my snipping tool. You can search for snipping tool. There it is. That's how you spell it. It was a new snip, and I highlighted this area. There we go. To get it into a Word document, it would be edit copy, edit paste. These are the formulas that I used. And indeed, I will put a link to this document as well. Let's move on to the election. The 2020 presidential election. Miami-Dade. The two main candidates, Mr. Trump, Mr. Biden. In total, 1.15 million votes. The county has approximately 2.8 million residents. Miami-Dade is at the southeast tip of Florida. And let's go and have a look and see how many round numbers there are in the counts of the various precincts. They have over 800 precincts. And here we go, precinct number one, two, three. These are the vote counts for Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden. And indeed, we can see over here that we have one number that is a multiple of 10. And we have five numbers that are three digits long, and none of them are multiples of 10. The thing that I would need to know is what proportion of the numbers do I expect to be a multiple of 10? This is the section from my book. I talk about the last two digits test. We are simply going to be looking for round numbers, but the tests are related. It's not the last two digits, but in fact, it's the last digit being a zero. And I have a discussion here and I say examples of the application could include election results. What proportion of numbers do I expect to be a multiple of 10? If I started with a two digit number 10 and I simply counted upwards, every tenth number would be a multiple of 10. 10, next uh, series of 10 numbers, we start with a multiple of 10, we start with a multiple of 10. But if I went and I stopped over here and I said, what proportion of the numbers were a multiple of 10? It would be quite high. But if I stopped way down after a few thousand numbers, my proportion is going to average something just a little over one tenth. So in the election numbers, I expect just a little over one tenth. I deleted all vote counts that were less than 10 for both uh, candidates because Numbers less than 10 really can't be a multiple of 10. I started with 10, and we can see here that, yes, this is a multiple of 10. This is a multiple of 10. Yes, yes, there the 20 is a multiple of 10. So the ones are multiples of 10, and these zeros are not. These are the proportions, 0 0.1077, 0 0.1021. They are just above 0.1. And this beckons the question, can I test whether these two proportions 
differ. We have a statistical test, the difference between two proportions. First, we would calculate the z-score, and we would use this formula. You can pause the video and read what these abbreviations stand for. But in summary, the z-score is going to get bigger the bigger the difference between these two proportions. If I go back, I'm talking about these two proportions. It's also going to get bigger the bigger the sample sizes are for each of my two samples. In this case, my sample sizes are about 790 records. I'm going to get a calculated z-score, and when it falls outside of this range, 1.64 on the top minus 1.64 at the bottom, I then have um, enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. I used Minitab. I took the data, I pasted it into Minitab, statistics, basic statistics, two proportions, determine whether the sample proportions for two groups differ significantly. We have to tell it where the indicators are. We have some options, and when I ran it, it came back and said, your z-score is 0.36. And indeed, what this means is you do not have enough evidence. In other words, you have to conclude that the two samples, the proportions, do not differ statistically significantly. I have links here. We can actually do this in Excel if we like. There we go. I have the Trump proportion, the Biden proportion. So I need to calculate the variance. So I will go equal variance of the sample. First for Mr. Trump, and his numbers are in B2 to B790. And we'll do the Biden, which is equals variance of S. And he is in D2 to D794. And we can format these cells. I have the Trump variance, the Biden variance. Now I can actually go and do the calculation data. Data analysis. These test two samples for means. OK. Variable 1 is in B2 to B. 790. Variable 2 is in D2 to D794. Variable 1's variance, 0 0.0962, 0 0.0918. Now you might have to go and read up a little bit uh, if you're rusty on how these things work. Okay, isn't this beautiful? We'll just widen this a bit here. Column width, 12. The Z, calculated at 0.36, format cells, number 2 is good. And this was exactly what we found with this here, the Z, 0.36. I have the two means. These two numbers are the same as these two numbers. It's calculated correctly over there. I have the variances that it's telling me. I have the number of records. And it says my z is 0.36. The critical z is 1.64 or 1.95, depending on whether I'm looking at two tails or one tail. I got the same answer in Excel, the 0.36. So we can use Excel. Round numbers. We use mod the remainder in Excel. We use if to say if it's round, if it's not round. We use count if in Excel to count and get the proportion. We looked at the election numbers. We looked at multiples of 10. I did a test for the difference between two proportions, and it showed that the differences were not large enough to be statistically significant. I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you have, let me know in the comment section.